Welcome to lesson two of the DB2 on campus lecture series. Today we're talking about the DB2 environment and this is part two of two parts. My name is Raul Chong and I'm the DB2 on campus program manager. In the first part we talked about instances and now we're going to talk about databases, the DAS and DB2 configuration. So let's start with databases. First of all I want to mention that in this course we're not explaining relational theory concepts so we're just basically teaching what DB2 is or how to work with DB2 so we're not teaching about what a database is, what a table is, what a view is, an index is, etc, etc. Now what we have here is a database called MyDB1 in instance DB2 and as said before instances are independent environments so I could create another instance or sorry another database called MyDB1 on a different instance there would be no problem because these are two independent environments and if you want to access a given database from a client you can access it through the port of the instance which is a unique number and that's how you can uniquely identify which database you want to connect to. When you create a database, by default, there are several objects created. So there are table spaces, there is a buffer pool, and there are log files. Let's explain first what a table space is all about. So for this, we're going to use a simple graph. So let's say you want to, uh, you have two tables, table A, and you have another table called table B and table A is a hot table so you want table A to use the fastest disk and let's say it's disk number one in this chart and then you have another disk which is slower which is disk number two okay. over here on the right you have your memory your RAM and um, this is called a buffer pool which is cache in memory for the database so Table A is a hot table, so it's, it's used a lot, and you want this table to uh, have a very good response uh, in terms of performance. So, um, one of the things that you can do to make sure the table A is stored in disk number one and uses the most uh, amount of memory is to first create a table space. Okay. So, we're going to create a table space. I'm just going to use uh, very briefly, I'm just going to copy paste from here that I had prepared and we're going to paste the table space right here right. so it's basically a layer between your table which are your logical tables and your physical disk and your physical memory so when you create a table space let's call it XYZ right. so let's say this is a table space XYZ when you create a table of space you have to associate this table of space through the syntax, so they create a uh, table space syntax to a directory or path or, di or device, and you associate it as well to a, uh, a buffer pool, which is basically, as I said before, cache in memory. Right? And then once you have created this table space and you create a table, you can create a table and say create this table in table space XYZ. So by doing this, you are basically um, relating table A with disk 1 and with this buffer pool or area in memory. So again, um, a table space is just a layer um, as said before. Let's go back to the presentation. Now there are three table spaces created by default. The first one is called syscat space. This table space is used to store the catalog which is also known as the dictionary or also known as the metadata that means data about data so basically it contains tables that store information like uh, how many uh, columns there are on all the tables how many views there are how many indices or what type of indices there are etc etc um, every object that starts with sys is normally something that DB2 has created so it's a system object and therefore you should not manipulate these objects because you may you may corrupt the, the database you know if, if you uh, play with these objects you may eventually uh, may cause the database to become unusable the second table space 
is called temp space one and it is used in the case where for example you're doing a sort or a join and there's not enough space in memory so DB2 will create temporary tables in this temp space one table space and they will be used to complete or to continue processing the sort or join and once they are finished those tables that were used temporarily would be deleted user space one is a table space that in the case where you issue a create table and you do not specify in which table space that table will reside then DB2 will use user space one as the table space so those are the three table spaces created by default and that's this is one of the reasons why it takes a few minutes to create a database in DB2 because DB2 has to create these table spaces and populate these the tables in syscat space as part of the creation of a database as well the a buffer pool is created and as I said before a buffer pool is cache for the database and you can create several buffer pools but the one that is created by default is called IBM default BP there are also some log files that are created uh, for recovery purposes. Um, as part of the creation of a database as well, there is some configuration that is done uh, using a tool called AutoConfigure, and we will talk more about this in uh, a following lesson. Now I'm showing on the right side, you know, whenever you create a database, these are it's the same objects that are created so that's why we say that also databases are independent between themselves because each of them has these objects and the first one which was it has space is a table space that contains the uh, the catalog or dictionary also known as the metadata which is the data about data so if you delete syscat space you're pretty much uh, corrupting the database or making it unusable. Anything that starts with sys, like in syscat space, is created by the system and normally you should not uh, mess, mess up with those objects. Now once I have created, uh, or once I have my database, I can create my own table space called in this case my tbls1 and in there I can create my tables, my views, my indices, etc, etc. Now in this example here I'm showing that I can also create another database within the same instance so um, it's not like in Oracle for example where where you can only create one database per instance so there's a one-to-one -one mapping in DB2 you can create many databases per instance um, and in this case sample I'm not showing you that it has also syscat space temp space one user space one etc etc because I just didn't have space but sample would also have those five objects that I mentioned before because as I said before again uh, databases are also independent between each other now if databases are independent between each other that means I can create a table of space in the sample database which has the same name as the one used before called mytbls1 so mytbls1 and used in the sample database and mytbls1 used in in the database mydb1 will not conflict because MyDB1 and Sample are independent. To connect, to create a database, I show you how to create a data database on part one of this presentation. And to connect to a database, you have to use the syntax connect to DBL, the database alias, which uh, if you don't provide the alias, it will be the same as the name of the database. And then you can optionally specify a user with a user ID using a given password. We will uh, show you some uh, connection examples later on in these lessons. So now I suggest you to pause and start working with Quick Lab number two which provides you uh, an exercise to create a new database. Moving on to the next section which is the DAS the DAS stands for the DB2 administration server or some people call it the database administration server this is a daemon process you may not use it too much um, it is created automatically for you when you install DB2 and on Windows it's called DB2 DAS 00 normally and on Linux it's called DAS USR, USR1 okay. the DAS um, it's normally used for remote Google administration. So what that means is, let's say I'm in Toronto right now and I want to administer a um, a database in uh, in China. So the DAS, if I want to remotely administer this server, 
using the GUI, then the DAS must be running in the server in China. Okay, so that's the main purpose. Now these are some DAS commands to create and to drop the DAS in either Windows or Linux. Normally you won't have to manipulate or work too much with the DAS. And to stop and start the DAS you use a db admin start, db admin stop. The DAS, there's only one DAS per server. So even if you have many DB2 instances or many instances, there will only be one DAS. Okay, finally we'll move to the last section of this presentation, with, which is DB2 configuration. So different, there are different levels in which you can configure DB2. The first level is environment variables. And um, the most important one is probably DB2 instance, which we discussed before, which is used to switch between the different instances in your server. The next level of configuration is called the database manager configuration file, which is configuration at the instance level, also known as the database manager. To work with the database manager configuration file, you could use the GUI, and we will show you how to do it uh, uh, in, lesson, in the next lesson when we talk about tools, but you can also use these commands here, and I'm going to quickly show you how to work with these commands. So if we, were, if we um, go to start, run, and open a DB2 CMD window, if you want to work with configuration, you can type get DB2 get DBM CFG, and that will show you all the parameters for the current instance. Okay. If you want to update the given parameters, let's say you want to update intraparallel using command line, you would say DB2 update dbm cfg using intraparallel and let's set it to yes right. we press enter and then the configuration is changed so quickly if we do a db2 get dbm cfg we should see here now that the new value of intraparallel is set to yes now some of these parameters are dynamic which means you don't need to stop and start the instance again some of them are not dynamic which means you do have to stop and start the instance using a db2 stop, db2 start for the inst for the change to make uh, to be effective. This is uh, I'll show you this later when we when we use the control center, but you can do the same using the control center. The next level of configuration is the database configuration file or dbcfg. So it is configuring within the database, and the commands are very similar. So going to this. Uh, screen we could first connect to a database so I can say db to connect to sample and then I can take a look at the configuration file by using db2 get db cfg for sample and then I get the result and from here I could change any parameter in a very similar way as in the other case so for example uh, let's say I'm going to change the um, let's say the parameter log file size okay so what I'm gonna do is you can do db2 update db cfg using log file size equals to 2000 and then in this case it's it's warning you so this particular one is is not a um, a dynamic parameter um, which is what I explained before. Now in the case of databases, uh, a dynamic parameter means that if you make a change to the value, you don't need to uh, disconnect all the connections and reconnect again for the parameter change to take effect. In the case where it is not dynamic, then you do have to make sure that you have to uh, that you have no connections on the database and then on the first connection that takes place, the new value will take effect. To make sure you don't have any connections, you can issue a db2 force applications all command. db2 force applications all. And that will force all applications or all connections. And sometimes you may have to do this a few times because it's a synchronous command, right? But then if you issue a db2 list applications all command, or these applications, db2 list applications command, in this case it shows you that there are no connections. So you basically force all connections. If you had if you had a connection, like in this case, db2 connect to sample, and then you issue the db2 list applications command, 
then it will show you that there is a connection right and this is the name of the application db2bp is the name of this application and it shows you the uh, the connection uh, application ID in the case of a remote connection it would not say local it would say it will provide you the TCP IP information okay great um, now that I've shown you this uh, because I connected again the new value that I that I uh, provided for the uh, sample database should now be in effect so if I take a look now again at the um, parameter that I modified I think it was a little bit below for the log size it should have changed to the new value so here is log file size now it changed to 2000 okay so let's go back to the presentation and um, you can also make this change also from the GUI tool the control center and I'll show you this later on the last place for configuration is the DB2 profile registry and this has no relationship to the Windows registry and you can change the DB2 registry using the command DB2 set a DB2 set dash all will show you all the values that are currently set so if I use DB2 set dash all then I can see the current values set if I issue DB2 set dash L LR it will show you all the possible all the parameters that I could possibly set and um, a DB2 set going back to DB2 set dash all you could set a, this parameter at different levels at the environment level at the instant level or globally which means for all the instances um, available so some common DB2 registry variables like db2.com and we will use this variable or this registry variable later on in these lessons especially for the section on connectivity and now I would suggest you to pause and work on quick lab number three which will allow you to practice working with instances databases and configuration great so you have reached the end of uh, part two of these lesson number two for the DB2 environment and as to what is next, I would recommend you to follow or to continue with lesson number three, tools and scripting. Thank you and have a good day.